All right. So there are two referendums in Quebec, and that's so we're going to talk today a little bit about the second one. Um, so first of all, um, between the 1980 referendum and the 1995 referendum, we have a couple of things that have changed in terms of how Quebec is perceiving its place within Canada. We have the 1982 constitution, which they do not sign. We have the 1987 Lake Accords, which are supposed to fix the problem for Quebec and fail. We have the 1992 Charlottetown Accords, which are supposed to fix the situation for Quebec and fail. Um, so they're in a slightly different place, sort of philosophically. Um, and one of the things that you'll notice in terms of that change um, is that this is run by slightly harder line separatists. So uh, Jacques Parizeau, whose name you probably remember as sort of being on the team the first time around, but now he's the leader of the Parti Québécois, which means he's the premier of Quebec. Um, so he's the leader. Uh, so he's the leader of the Parti Québécois. There is um, a federal support piece on this as well, because by 1995, um, partially as a result of the failure of the Meech Lake and Charlottetown Accords, the Bloc Québécois, uh, headed up by Lucien Bouchard, is the official opposition um, for the in, in Ottawa, which means that there is sort of a federal party active in protecting the interests of Quebec, at least that's what they would say now. In 1995, they would have said pr pr uh, promoting the sovereignty of Quebec. Um, and those are slightly different sort of takes on that piece, but um, that's sort of what's happening there. So there is um, a piece of that. Um, when you sort of look at the question text, you'll sort of see the difference there, or more accurately, mm, Look at the question text, and I'll sort of talk about what it what it looks like. This is again that is again in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, but one of the things that you'll sort of that is sort of inherent in this proposal for separation from Canada for independence um, is a provision for a unilateral separation, uh, which is basically a way of saying that the government of Quebec wanted the ability to separate from Canada, even if the government of uh, in Ottawa refused to negotiate with Quebec about that separation. Um, and at the time, that was sort of a, yeah, we don't really know what the federal government is proposing. Um, since then, we've got a number of documents that have come to light that suggest that the federal government was basically planning that that was their strategy if the vote was yes, was to say we don't have to recognize the results of those refer of that referendum and we don't have to negotiate with you. Um, so there's some kind of conversations about whether or not that was necessary. Um, there's that kind of piece. This is... Um, more about sort of like there's no proposal for maintaining common currency they're talking about slightly um, more defended borders um, what I do want you to think about in reading that question though um, is how hard it is to actually answer um, because unless you have read the bill uh, in question in that sort of space you don't actually know what that question is asking you because it's saying, do you want Quebec to separate from Canada following the provisions of this bill? Okay, well, is that souveraineté association? Is that hardline independence? Is that, you know, like retreat backwards and burn the wheat? Like, we don't know what that means, and the voters don't either, um, which means that we have some sort of concerns about that. Um, so in that the question that you have, and that's the question that they were asked in 19, that the voters in Quebec were asked in 1995, assumes sort of both that you have read that bill and that you know how to read that bill, um, in the sense that you have the skills and the understanding of the politics and political sort of structure to understand what that bill is actually proposing. Okay. Um, so that question is important. We're going to get back to it in a, in, in a couple, in our, not next video, but the one after it on the Clarity Act. We'll sort of talk about what that looks like. But for right now, sort of understand that. Um, you remember I talked about 85% voter turnout in the 1980 referendum being real high? In 1995, 93% of eligible voters turned out to vote. Again, that is unimaginably high for a contemporary election. Like, you don't see numbers like that. And that tells us that this is really, 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 really important. Um, the other thing that you need to understand is that this referendum result is much, 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 much closer. Um, so 
I was obviously a very cool elementary school student when this referendum happened, but I can remember staying up watching the results come in um, because the idea about whether Quebec was separating from Canada or staying were changing, sort of like riding by riding. Um, these results are really, 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 really close to the point that um, that 93% voter turnout means four and a half million votes get cast. Four and a half million votes get cast. And the end result is, is decided by 50,000. Okay? So what that means is that this, elect that this referendum is really, 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 really close. Okay? So that's important, and again, it points to that sort of existing division in um, what sort of is going on there. The other, and, and one of the things that I want to sort of highlight, and we could have said this in the last one, just I don't need to say it twice, is that the way that that, that division is more than a vote yes and a vote no. So if you look at this demographically, what you will find is that if your family has been, is francophone and has been in Quebec for a really long time, i.e. if you are part of the vast majority of Quebec francophones who can trace their ancestry back to the 1760s, and there's a lot of them, you're really likely to have voted to leave Canada. Okay? If you're at Quebec, if you live in Quebec and you've been there for a really long time and you're Anglophone, you're likely to have voted to stay within Canada, unsurprisingly. What the, the people who voted with that sort of Anglophone no side, though, is also almost all relatively new immigrants to Quebec. So if your family has been there for, say, even less than two generations, chances are really good you voted to stay within Canada. And if you are Quebec, if you live in Quebec but you're Indigenous, you also are likely to have voted to stay within Canada. Um, we'll talk about the Indigenous question a little bit next because that's a particular one, but when we start talking about um, the immigrants, the, 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 the population of relatively new immigrants to Quebec, a lot of that is about an intention to have immigrated to Canada for its for in and of itself. And that's a really, really important kind of piece. And they didn't vote. They didn't choose to immigrate to sort of this weird independent country in the middle that's stuck between the Maritimes and Ontario. Um, so there's that kind of tension. One of the things that we're going to get into a little bit later on is that Quebec's nationalism has sort of changed forms and it doesn't look so much like the attempt to separate anymore. It looks a little bit different. And it sort of goes back to that division of votes between who votes which way. Um, so Jacques Parizeau uh, is the leader of the Parti Québécois and uh, as anyone who sort of has political uh, aspirations and political sort of thoughts about this, um, this is what happens when you let a frustrated candidate, a frustrated politician, in front of a crowd and cameras without being very certain of what they're going to say. Um, so this is sort of like the last moment of Jacques Parizeau's political career because on the night of the referendum he stood in front of news cameras and said uh, that he lost the election because of money and the ethnic vote. Um, and it turns out you can't say that in front of cameras, that that is perceived as a racist comment for, you know, reasons. Um, and I will also sort of point out, um, just for some context in terms of, uh, like I have a little bit of foreshadowing as to where Quebec's nationalism is going. Um, if you are at all familiar with Quebec's Bill 21, which is the secularism law, the one that sort of prevents you from wearing religious garb while receiving or providing government services, if you're familiar with that bill, Jacques Parizeau has said that that bill is racist, um, which sort of has something to say about that. Um, like, this man lost his career, his political career, for racist comments, and he's the one who's saying that that bill is racist. We'll talk about that bill a little bit later on when we talk about racism and sort of immigration in, in Canada, but that's sort of part of that process. So that's the, like, rough result of the 1995 referendum. There's sort of two specific pieces that come into this that you need to understand to make sense of it. One of them is Indigenous voices in the 1995 referendum, which we'll sort of get into next. And then the next is the Clarity Act, which we're going to sort of follow up on.